I am Chanbha Ravan. In the interest of Muslim women, I raise uh, these questions. What are the intricacies in uh, Talaq, number one? Number two, and the, while bigamy is an offense in Indian laws, uh, it is not uh, prohibited in Muslim law, number two. Third, what are the protections given to the Muslim women relating to maintenance? Uh, number four, and the, relating to common civil code. MashaAllah. Brother has asked four in one shot. All require a lecture. Well, there are four questions. Number one, what are the intricacies in talaq? Point number two, what about maintenance in Islam after divorce is talking? Number three is about polygamy. Number four is about common civil code. The first question, what are the intricacies in talaq? There are no intricacies, very simple. Talaq, very simple. People have many intricacies in it. The procedure for talaq is given in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. There's a full surah by the name of talaq, chapter number 65. So if you read Surah Talaq chapter 65 verse number 1 to 7 and Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 220 to 242, it gives details of Talaq. In short, Talaq is mutually agreed upon. There are different types of Talaq broadly. One is by mutual agreement of both husband and wife. They both agree to part. Second type, it is unilaterally by the husband. He wants to give Talaq. Point number three, third type, that if it's mentioned in the Nikah Nama that the wife too can give unilateral divorce, she can give. It's known as Isma or Talaq e Taufi. You can refer to my video cassette for details. Fourth type, if the husband is not giving her rights and if it's not mentioned in the Nikah Nama, she can go to a Qazi and do Nikah Fask. And the fifth type is, the husband may be good but she doesn't want to live with the husband. She can request the husband to give Talaq, it's known as Qulaq. So basically five types. The general type of Talaq is mentioned in the Quran. It says that if there is a problem between the husband and wife, there should be a meeting between the husband and wife. Not that if she's putting too much salt, it's a talak, 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 and that's finished. If you don't like too much salt in your food, you tell your wife, don't put too much salt, and the problem is solved. So mutually sit together and solve the problem. If it's not solved mutually together, Allah says in Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 35, appoint an arbiter, one from the wife's side, one from the husband's side. Appoint an arbiter, and try and solve the problem. You know, one person from the wife's side, elderly person, one person from the husband's side, sit together, what's the problem? Yet if the problem is not getting solved, then the Quran says that you can warn her if she's not behaving, if she's not giving the duties of a wife, you can warn her, you can separate from the bed, etc. And finally, after all these procedures, then the man can pronounce salah. When you pronounce salah, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, Verse number 228, it says that once you pronounce talaq, wait for three monthly periods. So you have to wait for three monthly periods. Unfortunately, what the non-Muslim is asking question, I know, is talking about can you give talaq in one breath, one sitting, talaq, 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 and the matter is over, which sounds very inhuman. Unfortunately, the Muslim ummah, there are three types of talaq, not in Islam, in the Muslim community. One is talaq e bida, talaq, talaq, talaq in one sitting, and talaq is done. The second is talaq e hasan. That means a good talaq. You give talaq, wait for one menstrual period, again repeat the talaq, again wait for one menstrual period, again repeat talaq, talaq e hasan. The third type is talaq e ahasan. The best type, which is mentioned in the Quran, the Sahih Hadith, which is the correct type. In which, as I was mentioning, after all the procedures, try and sit together, if there's a problem, appoint an arbiter. After that, once the husband pronounces talaq, you have to wait for three menstrual periods. Wait for three menstrual periods within the idda. It's known as idda. Within the three menstrual period, if you feel, oh, I give talaq to her. Five days I realize I can't do without my wife. Then you can again live together. You can do ruju. No problem. But yet, after three months you realize, no, we want to part. You can part, but on equitable terms. Don't do much slinging. In the Indian court of law, you have to prove your wife is not good, the wife has to prove husband is not good. You have to do much singing. You have to wash the dirty linen in public. Islam is against that. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2, verse 232, 232, that when you part, part on good terms. Don't even take back the gifts which have given. Don't do much singing. Don't try and prove, oh, she's very bad. She's done adultery, fornication, and he's very bad, and blah, blah, blah. Part on good terms. So in Islam, the three menstrual period of the idda is the waiting period, which is the trial period. If after three menstrual periods, then you part and you stay separate. This is the right procedure of talaq. 
Again, if you think after two years, oh, fine, what I did was wrong. Again, you can remarry the same woman, new nikah, new meher. You can marry. New nikah, new meher. After two years, Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 232, do not prevent the woman from marrying their former husband. But again, if there's a problem, again, the same procedures, again, idda, three period, gift talaq, again, you part, again, you marry, after maybe one year, again, you give talaq, Allah says, maximum talaq thrice. After that, talaq is not guda gudi ka khel. It's not doll's marriage, marry and part, marry and part. After that, you cannot remarry the same husband unless you marry somebody else. And in the course of time, if that person gives divorce, if the marriage is not compatible, then you can marry the husband who has given you triple talaq earlier. So this is the right procedure, brother. Come to your second question. What is the maintenance? In Islam, for a marriage to solemnize, there is maher. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 4, that gift to the woman in marriage, a marital gift. Maher is compulsory for a marriage to solemnize. And maher depends upon the financial status of the would-be husband and wife. The Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 20, you can even give a mountain of gold. You can give any amount. So this mahar, if talaq takes place, if the mahar has not been given, the mahar has to be given. There's nothing like maintenance. Because in Islam, when a talaq takes place, divorce takes place, the husband goes in more financial loss than the woman. Because the husband has to forego the mahar, the mahar may be 1 lakh rupees, 5 lakh rupees, 10 lakh rupees, Allah walam. Imagine if in talaq, the woman takes away the mahar, the husband will have to marry a new wife. Again, he has to give new mahar and then also pay maintenance. Then I have to give a talk on the man's rights in Islam. See, Allah is just. He is not unjust. So in Islam, when a divorce takes place, the man is in financial loss. Because in marriage, in the other Hindu culture, the woman gives dowry to the man. 1 lakh rupees, graduate, engineer 10 lakh rupees, doctor 50 lakh rupees. In the Indian culture, in Islam, giving or taking dowry, forcibly, demanding is haram in Islam. Willfully, if the parents of the girl give some gifts allowed, but demanding indirectly, my son likes to drive a Mercedes car, telling him Mercedes car for dowry, haram. So in Islam, the meher is there. With the meher money, what the girl gets, from the husband, she can invest that money, she can keep it, she can give it to the mother, what she wants she can do. So that itself is a financial loss. Now again divorce takes place, she can marry another husband gets new man. She gets new money. The poor husband has to give away to a new wife, man. And then you tell him give maintenance. How will the poor chap survive? So in Islam, the woman is on the financial receiving end. And you can refer to my video cassette, women that's in Islam will give more details. Coming to your third question about women, polygamy. That why does in India bigamy is prohibited? Not for everyone, only for the Hindus. No? Only for non-Muslims. For Muslims it's not prohibited. In India, only for non-Muslims. Why does in Islam bigamy is permitted? Or why is polygamy a man allowed to have more than one wife? Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth which says marry only one. There is no other religious scripture on the face of the earth which says marry only one. You read all the other religious scriptures, whether it be Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharat, Veda, Bible, no scripture says marry only one except the Quran. If you read Ramayana, the father of Sri Ram, King Dashrath, he had more than one wife. If you read Mahabharat, Sri Krishan, how many wives he had? Four? Ten? Hundred? Thousand? How many he had? 16,108. So when Sri Krishna had 16,108 wives, why can't we Muslims have maximum four? If you read the Bible in the Old Testament, Solomon had 700 wives, Abraham had three wives. In the Jewish scripture, Old Testament it is there, Christian Bible it is there. So according to Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, all the religions give you permission to marry as many as you wish. Five, ten, thousand, no upper limit. It is the church which put a restriction that the Christian should marry only one. It is the Jewish rabbi, Genshem Yehuda, he passed a synoid in the 10th century that Jews should marry only one. Even in the Hindu scriptures, you can marry as many as you wish. It is the Indian government which has passed a law in 1954 under the Hindu Marriage Act Hindu Special Marriage Act that the Hindus can marry only one. 
it is the indian government which put a restriction not the hindu scriptures and if you see the statistics of the polygamous marriages done by indians in a span of 10 years between 1951 and 1961 the muslims did polygamous marriages 4.31% the hindus 5.06 so hindus in india do more polygamous marriages than the muslims though the indian government doesn't permit the hindus to marry more than one wife but hindus do more polygamous marriages than the muslims now let's try and understand what does the quran say quran says in surah nisa chapter 4 verse number 3 marry women for choice in twos threes or fours but if you can't do justice marry only one this statement marry only one is only given in the quran and no other religious scripture you can marry two three or four but if you can't do justice marry only one and allah says in the quran in surah nisa chapter number 4 verse number 129 it is difficult to justice between your wives so don't turn away from them altogether so marrying more than one wife in islam is mubah is optional it's not fard it's not compulsory but if you marry more than one wife and you can't do justice you're in problem let's try and understand the logical reason why islam gives permission for a man to have more than one wife by nature male and female are born in equal proportion but if you ask any pediatrician he will tell you that the female child is more stronger medically than a male child she can fight the germs diseases and toxins better than the male child so in the pediatric age itself there are more deaths among the male children as compared to female children so female children are more in number in the pediatric age group as compared to male children as life goes on there are death due to accidents death due to cigarette smoking death due to alcoholism death due to wars there are more male dying as compared to females today in the world brother there are more females in the world as compared to males only in some countries like india which are third world countries the female population is less than the male population why because of female feticide and female infanticide according to a bbc report in the program assignment let a die there is a british reporter by the name of emily becken and she says that in india every day more than 3000 fetuses are being aborted after the identified that they are females that means every year more than 1 million fetuses are being aborted in india in this beloved country of ours after the identified the females if you stop this evil practice in india even in india the female population become more than the male population according to the tamil nadu government hospital report it says out of 10 female born alive four are put to death in this state of yours tamil nadu government hospital report out of 10 female born alive four are put to death if you stop this evil practice in this country even in india the female population become more than the male population if you see the statistics of throughout the world in new york alone there are 1 million female more than males in usa alone there are 7.8 million females more than males in germany alone there are 5 million female more than males in uk alone there are 4 million female more than males in russia alone there are 9 million females more than males and god alone knows how many millions of females are more than males throughout the world now coming to the basic question suppose your sister happens to live in america usa and my sister happens to live in usa where the market is saturated every man has found a woman for himself yet there will be 7.8 million females who will not find life partners and if your sister happens to be one of them and my sister happens to be one of them one of the 7.8 million females who has not found a life partner the only option remaining for them is that they either marry a man who already has a wife or become public property public property some people tell brother zakir such a harsh word i say there is no better sophisticated word i can think of it is the most sophisticated word i can think of public property there is no option you either marry a man or the wife or become public property and anyone would opt for the first in america and usa on average a person has eight different sexual partner before he settles down with one after marrying how many partners there that's not mentioned See, having mistresses common in America, five, ten, twenty, hundred, no problem. Having two legal wives it doesn't go down the throat. In mistresses, a woman she is dishonored, she does not get a right, she is degraded. If the wife marries a man who already has a wife, she gets equal rights, she gets honor, she gets her rights, she lives respectfully, but it doesn't go down the throat. of the americans having more than one wife mistress is no problem i do agree no woman under normal circumstances would like to share the husband i agree with that 
But the Islamic Sharia says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. Any good Muslim who knows the situation of the world, that the problem that is there, she would not mind sharing a husband with another woman to prevent her sister from becoming a public property. So let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. I agree that no woman would like to share the husband. But in the betterment of humanity, that's the reason Islam permits a man to have more than one wife to protect the modesty of the woman to prevent her from making public property. Hope that answers the question. The last question. You know, four questions, long answers. I don't mind, but I prefer one question at a time. The last question brother asked is about oh, why don't we have a common civil code? Brother, I would love a common civil code. I, Dr. Zakir Naik, I'm not speaking on behalf of other Muslims. I would love a common civil code, but that code which is the most practical for human beings. And we should have a debate. Allah says in the Quran, Ta'ala wila kalmitin sawa im bayna bayna kum. Come to common terms as we ask you. Let's have a dialogue which is the best code of law. And on behalf of Islam, inshallah, I will be. I will stand. And inshallah, you pick up the law of Islam. It's the best law. In Islam, we have a system of zakat. See, every religion says don't rob. Every country in the world says don't rob. India says, America says, Saudi Arabia says. What's the difference? The difference in Islamic law is, Islam not only says don't rob, it shows you a way how to prevent robbery. Islam says every rich person gives zakat. Two and a half percent zakat every rich person should give. Who are the saving of more than 85 grams of gold. If every rich human being gives zakat, poverty will be eradicated. After that, Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38, as to the thief, be it a man or a woman, chop off his or her hand. Chopping off the hands? In this age of science and technology, people think that if they go to Saudi Arabia where this law is practiced, every second person you come across will have his hand chopped off. Believe me, I've been to Saudi Arabia several times. I have not come across a single human being whose hands have been chopped off. There may be some people, but it's not as common as the non-Muslims think. You know America, which you look up to America as a country which is the most advanced in the world, do you know it has one of the maximum rate of robbery and theft in the world? I'm asking you the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, any man who's rich should give 2.5% charity of his excess wealth. After that, any man or woman robs, chopping off the hands. I'm asking the question, will the rate of robbery and theft in America, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? Decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the sharia, you get results. That's why in Makkah, when you go to Makkah during the time for Salah, the shopkeepers, the gold jewelers, they only put a string, a rope. Shop is closed. All crores of rupees of gold is there. A non-Muslim will think, what an upside down town is this? Jewelry is worth crores of rupees. No lock, no door, only a rope. Why? A person will think 10 times before robbing. You rob, chopping off the hand. So if you want to implement any law, the least state of robbery and theft Saudi Arabia. Same thing. India says don't rape. USA says don't rape, Islam says also don't rape. Islam shows you a way how to prevent rape. Wear the hijab, man should lower the gaze. Anyone rapes, any man rapes, capital punishment, death penalty. In America, every 32 seconds, one rape is taking place. You know, since the time we are here, since my lecture started, about three hours, already more than 300 rapes may have taken place. If you want to have a common civil code in America, what to apply? If you implement the Islamic Sharia, the man should lower his gaze when he looks at a woman. If any unashamed thought comes, the woman should wear the Islamic hijab. After that, anyone rapes capital punishment. I'm asking the question, will the rate of rape in America increase, remain the same or decrease? Decrease, decrease the practical law. As far as personal law is concerned, a personal law can differ. We Muslims have a Muslim personal law in India. But the criminal law should be same. So if you want to implement a common civil code, brother, I would be number one for it. But implement that law which is the most practical. And as far as Islamic law is concerned, inshallah, I will be the lawyer for that. So inshallah, I would love common civil code in India, but one which is the most practical. Hope that answers the question.